Debbie's life has been at the service of others and at the service of our country. Debbie and I have been close friends for almost 35 years. Debbie was very influential at the beginning of Friends. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't exist without her. She gave us not only financial support from the General Motors Foundation, she cared deeply. Debbie joined Friends Board in 1998, and I think she really pushed us and helped us to focus on how we could be a really unique voice in the fight against cancer. Friends makes a difference every day. It's helping the researchers, it's helping the scientists, it's helping doctors, the patients, and everybody who has a need. Her advice when her husband was on the Hill and now as a congressional leader, we really wouldn't be able to achieve the things we have without Debbie. Debbie has been tireless in her support of that effort, giving her time, her energy, uh, her vision, and her wisdom uh, to make this even better than it possibly could have been. I think that relationships are one of the most important things in life, period. Debbie is thoughtful, she's informed, and she's very compassionate. Debbie is an incredible leader. She does her homework, and she listens, and she takes action. She's always looking for a way to compliment the other people who've been involved in a project. She never wants the bright light shining on her. She wants to try to share it. Her family really is her district, and she works 24-7. You see that heart, that compassion that she has, the drive that she has to try and get things done. And if you're going to confront her on some issue, better do your homework because she's done hers. You know, more than most members, she's always reminding us, is this something that people care about? I couldn't have done my job without people like Debbie Dingle on the committee. Debbie and Marlene's friendship is built on a commitment to public service and to helping others. They lost their husbands the same year, and despite the immense loss, they doubled down on their deep commitment to public service and to one another and helping one another. They lived together during a really difficult time during COVID. For 91 consecutive years, the Dingles have represented Michigan's 12th district. Debbie has continued that incredible legacy, supporting many vital issues for the people of Michigan. John himself was continuing his father's legacy, and I think he felt very strongly that it was important for Debbie to be there to continue his legacy. But at the same time, she is her own person. For Debbie, she started a new leaf. I mean, she did this on her own. Following in the footsteps of John, her husband, the love of her life, and she was the love of his life, and now occupying that seat in the Congress that he held for many years. She carries that tradition forward in an honorable, noble, wonderfully generous, spirited way. She led efforts to ensure access to in-home care and community services for patients. She's also been a tireless champion for women's health, for women's inclusion in clinical trials, for health care for everyone, for working class families. There's something inside of me that makes me want to fix a problem when I see it. Well, congratulations, Debbie. We're all so proud of you here in Michigan. This award could not be more well-deserved. Congratulations and thank you, Debbie. Congratulations, Debbie. Congratulations, Congresswoman. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie, for a lifetime of public service to our country. I couldn't be more proud to give you this award. I really think you deserve this more than anybody I know. You're making me cry. <laughs>